Hey guys, so I was debating whether or not I was actually going to film this video for you just because if you're a subscriber of mine if you, and you've seen some of my past videos, then you'll know I put myself on a makeup spending ban. But recently, for our upcoming four year anniversary, my boyfriend had hauled some makeup products for me, which is kind of cheating. And now I'm about to show you some more makeup products that I purchased with my own money. So if you're not a subscriber of mine, you probably won't care. But if you are, you're probably like shaking your finger at me like bad. You shouldn't have done that. I broke my own spending ban, I know. But for good reason. I saw the new Wet n Wild Spring Forward 2013 8 Pan Eyeshadow Palettes. And they're limited edition. I know people are going to want them because they're amazing quality. So when I saw them, I put them in my hand, I walked around and held them very close and finally bought them because I knew I wasn't going to be able to put them back down. So the first one I have is Nude Awakening. It's a very neutral everyday palette. I'm most excited to try out this one just because I think I'm going to get more use out of it. The other one is called Going in the Wild and these are the only new palettes from Wet n Wild in the 8 pan form that they have. They are also, I believe, $5 at the most. So very affordable. The quality, as most of you know, are amazing. So this palette just has a few more bright and fun colors for the spring and summertime. And what I'm going to do is just swatch them for you on my arm. I tried to do this the other day with my Stila in the Moment palette and it was awful. So I'm going to go ahead and swatch them all at once off camera and come back to you guys because otherwise I just don't know how, how it's going to turn out. So I'll be right back. Okay, so this is going to be a bit awkward, but I've been able to swatch them on my arm in the same order that you see them in the actual palette. And the only ones I had trouble with were the very last two definer shades, um, this color and this one. I just needed more than one swatch to get them to show up that pigmented, otherwise they were not patchy but just not as uh, pigmented and buttery smooth as the other ones. And this gray color is really, really pretty. I do really like that one. And then you have a light neutral color here, a nice matte blending color for the crease. And then there's also a really pretty dark brown here too as well. And this is that eyelid color. So here are all the swatches one more time. You can kind of take a minute. If you want to pause the video, that might help. You can look at them more closely. I believe I swatched that pretty well, at least compared to some of my other videos that I've done. So that is the Nude Awakening palette. Okay, so this is the In the Wild eyeshadow palette. And it's in the same order that you see above. And I left the two definer shades at the end alone with just one swatch so you can better understand the application. They're not patchy, but they're just not as pigmented as some of the other colors are. And then I also wanted to show you, this is a very light shimmery color. It's a bit hard to notice, but it's extremely, extremely pretty. I'm really excited about that one. And then underneath here I have a light gold. And I thought this was a dupe for matte Trax eyeshadow, but the Trax is just a bit darker. And this color right here is this brown crease color. And it's okay. It's not very pigmented. But I'm wondering if that would change once you're using primer and you're actually applying it where it's meant to be. Sometimes I will swatch things on my arm and think that they're not very good, but when I'm actually applying them and using them the way they're meant to be used, they're wonderful. So I'm hoping that's what's going to happen with some of these shades. But I'm never really disappointed with Wet n Wild. I think just because their prices are so affordable. If this was $8 or $10, I might be a little disgruntled, but for five, it's not a big deal. This shadow here is extremely pretty. I'm really excited for that one. This one's nicely pigmented. So is this one, and this is a really pretty mint green. So those are the swatches, and I think I'm gonna test out a few of the shades on my eyelid, um, especially 
this bluish one, it looked really pretty, but I wasn't really sure how it swatched. So I'm going to apply a bit of my e.l.f. eyelid primer and see if it does a better job on my actual eyelid. So I'm just going to take a eyeshadow brush from Rite Aid and test out this color here. And there's just a teeny bit of fallout. So that applied a lot better onto my actual eyelid than it did onto my arm. I was kind of worried how that would turn out. And I think I'm going to test out another shade from this palette. And I really thought the green shade was pretty. And I know this is going to look very awkward having two completely different colors on my eyelids. But I will, I will do it for you. <laughs> Um, so I'm going to take the same brush, just the other side, tap it, just a teeny bit of fallout, no big deal. Oh, I should put eyelid primer on first though. And the reason why I'm using the e.l.f. eyelid primer is because it's only a dollar, so it doesn't really have a huge effect on the performance of the eyeshadows, and if it does, well, it's only a dollar, so... It's not like a Urban Decay one where you have to spend an extra $30 to get the results. So I'm just going to tape, tape, I'm just, ah, I'm just going to take this mint green eyeshadow. And this is going to be the third layer. So that's what this color would look like. And I think if you used a white eyeshadow base underneath, like a, a NYX Jumbo Pencil in Milk, it would probably be more vibrant of a green. But even for it to just be on top of a $1 eyelid primer, that's not really too bad. Um, it's still a vibrant green. This was three layers, though, but I'm still impressed. I don't really think I can be disappointed in Wet n Wild um, when it comes to their eyeshadows. Okay, I'm going to take a Sigma E35 blending brush, and I'm going to go into this brown definer shade that was I was kind of unsure of earlier. So I'm just going to tap it out, take some of that fallout off and try and blend it in this crease. And I'll do the same thing with another color back from the Going in the Wild palette. Okay, so I'm just going to take a blending brush. This is a Soho one. And I'm going to try out <laughs> this green, dark green color. I'm going to take just a teeny bit more. <laughs> oh, 
Alright, so you can kind of see how these eyeshadows would work on the lid and in the crease. And why not? I'll try the brow bone too. And I'm just going to do that with my finger to make it quick. So I was really impressed with this one, so I'm going to try it out. And it's probably not the best idea to try and apply it with your finger, but at least you can kind of see what it would look like. And, oh, I look so scary. <laughs> it's a good thing I'm not going out in public at all today. Um, I'll try this other light brow bone color. And the brow bone colors are very, very pigmented. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh goodness, I don't know what's going on here. So that's the brow bone color for both of the palettes. So there you have it. There's my review slash demonstration of these two new palettes from Wet n Wild. I do recommend that you give them a try. Maybe if you're a bit nervous, just give the Nude Awakenings one a go. I think it would be a really good everyday palette to have, especially if you're starting out with makeup. You really should try and look for this one. And another good one is definitely the Comfort Zone. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful, if not anything but entertaining. Um, and feel free to comment down below with any suggestions or feedback for me, and I'll see you the next one. Bye.